Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. Today we'll be having a brief look at the boiler fuel oil combustion system and the process of supplying the fuel oil through the combustion system into the boiler. We'll also be having a look at the flow chart that is the flow process which is followed to ensure that the combustion system is working and the boiler is firing. So now let us start. In today's time a typical marine boiler has a burner system that consists of two different parts. First is the ignition burner and second is the main burner. The ignition burner can also be namely as the pilot burner. So the pilot burner is provided the job of initiating the combustion in the boiler. For that we have to make sure that the pilot burner fuel oil is supplied through a separate line. Generally this line consists of diesel flow because it is easier for us to ensure the start of combustion on diesel oil and that is why the line is kept separate. It has a separate fuel pump, individual pressure gauges in the line, a separate strainer as well as separate solenoids for the auto triggering of the initiation of the combustion. Post that we will have a main burner supply line. For this main burner supply line we can use either diesel or VLSFO as per the area we are sailing in and that is why the elements in the line would be arranged accordingly. We would have a separate fuel oil pump in this line, a heater that is used in case we are using VLSFO and as we know that VLSFO would be having a higher viscosity that is why we would be needing to maintain it at a higher temperature to ensure it's burning in the main burner. Separate pressure gauges separate solenoids for the level of firing and the firing sequence, a recirculation line ensuring the recirculation of the fuel under standby condition and individual elements on sub parts such as the thermostats within the heater that are responsible for the triggering in and triggering out of the heater, the main thermostat that is helpful with the actual measurement of the fuel that is being maintained in the line and to simultaneously control it as per the set value that we are trying to maintain. The thermocouple that is responsible for analysis and conveyance of the temperature that is being maintained in the line and different valves such as the safety valve on a heater, the vent line on the heater, the drain line within the supply line and the heater as well as well as the vent line on the air separator and the drain line on the air separator. So now let us start to understand how this entire system actually works. So now suppose if I put my boiler on firing mode under auto operation. So when the steam demand is high and the steam pressure goes low, the steam pressure switch senses that and sends a simultaneous signal to the combustion circuit and from there the automation picks up the signal and then triggers the combustion circuit to trigger the combustion process. Once the combustion process is triggered after all the internal checks for the system being carried out by itself, what happens is first the fuel oil pump for the pilot burner line would cut in and it would make sure that diesel is being supplied abundantly into the pilot burner line. Upon receiving the adequate signal, the solenoid valve of the pilot burner line would trigger and allow the diesel to flow in into the pilot burner segment. With the intermixing of the air that is being supplied in the form of combustion air that is the combustion support air into the burner, this diesel would start the combustion with the help of the spark electrode that is present inside the burner. Once the combustion is started, after that now we have to sustain the combustion. So for that in the meantime the main fuel oil supply is also triggered simultaneously to the pilot combustion line. So the fuel pump of the main line is supplying the fuel which is passing through the pre section of the auto strainer and the air separator where the auto venting system is there and also the recirculation line connects back. So from here the fuel oil goes ahead and through the different valve arrangements it goes into the heater. So let us say if I am running my boiler on VLSFO then this system would be running continuously because I do not want my fuel to stagnate in the line. So irrespective of when the boiler is on a standby condition the fuel would be circulating through the recirculation system. When the VLSFO reaches the heater, the thermostats are responsible for maintaining the actual temperature within the heater that we have asked it to. For example, if I set my temperature as 120 degrees Celsius to be maintained for the fuel oil supply. So there would be a cut in, a cut out that is when the heater is being supplied with the energy to heat up the fuel either it can be through electrical means or through steam. 
similarly for cutout and for the actual thermostat that is comparing and triggering through the set value and after that it goes into the discharge line from here the thermocouple is responsible for the measuring and sensing of the temperature of the line and simultaneously conveying this into the remote as well as local means of checking the temperature usually ahead of this there would be a small strainer that is useful for removing the fine impurities and making sure that the oil reaching the final burner assembly is completely free of smaller debris or finer wear particles to make sure that the nozzle does not get choked this Y strainer is very important to be cleaned on a regular basis and sometimes what happens is that if we are not aware of its location we miss out and later on our burner starts giving us trouble. Now when the fuel moves forward as we can see here the SV3 would be the common solenoid which would allow the flow ahead. So this SV3 is triggered and simultaneously you can see ahead there are two different solenoid valves SV1 and SV2. Now, if the steam gradient or steam differential is too high, depending upon the steam consumption, the boiler fires in a high firing mode. Whereas, if it is moderately regulated, it fires on a low firing mode. Depending upon that, SV1 and SV2 trigger. If it is only a low firing mode, then only one solenoid has to trigger to supply one line. And if it is in the high firing mode, then both the solenoids have to trigger simultaneously and allow fuel to flow in more quantity for higher combustion. This can be set through the manual knob that is present on the automation panel of the boiler and this will allow the boiler to fire in the high firing mode. Now why that selector switch is present is because when the high firing is taking place not only the burner has to fire more fuel but also the draft fan has to modulate the supply of the combustion and the draft air into the combustion chamber because higher firing would need higher amount of mixing and modulating air that is why. Now, in case of firing and in case of recirculation also, the fuel that is being recirculated, it either being extra or being recirculated completely would be recirculated through the outlet line and return back into the air separator chamber which is like a mixing chamber for separate boiler line and here the deaeration takes place because other combustion vapors as well as gases that enter into the line and due to the high temperature maintenance within the line certain vapor lock can take place and this is the point where all the air and vapor is being vented out. So this mixing column is very important. Now as I said that under standby condition if we are using a oil of VLSFO grade there might be requirements that we have to recirculate to make sure that the temperature is always maintained and this is where the fuel control valve and the recirculation valves will help because they will continuously keep circulating the oil with the help of the main pump or in some cases there can be an additional circulation pump which can be attached. With the help of that they can keep circulating the oil under standby condition from the suction side and again back through the aeration chamber into the suction side to make sure that the loop is continuous and the oil does not get stagnant in the line. It is very important to understand that the lines when we are removing the boiler burner from place the lines which are attached with the help of high pressure clamps or mountings into the burner should not be intermixed because as I said that under low firing sequence a certain solenoid will cut in and supply through a certain nozzle and depending upon the mode of firing the nozzle dia that is the final hole dia that is responsible for the fuel to get out from the burner is also different when it comes to low firing nozzle and the high firing nozzle. So in case the breakdown of the fuel is not good enough in finer particles the combustion will not be sustained. That is why we have to make sure that the lines during overhaul would be connected properly once the overhaul is finished so that the oil is supplied into the correct nozzle depending upon the mode that we have switched and that combustion is continuously achieved without fail. It is also important to know that some boilers have a manual changeover process and there walls such as the air vent line and the drain line are very important because these are the walls through which we can purge any extra air ingress or the vapor which is being produced during the intermixing of the diesel and the heavier fuels depending upon the temperature difference. They can be vented out manually as well to make sure that there is no air or vapor lock within this system and fuel is being circulated at a good enough rate to achieve proper changeover within the stipulated period of time. In some cases you will also find that the thermostat terminal ends can be filled with external ingress or with 
deposits that are normally circulated with the fuel oil of heavier grades that is why we have to keep checking the probes under regular maintenance as well as the heater elements to make sure that the heater is working with complete efficiency so the temperature that is being maintained in the fuel oil line which is very important is of the correct value because if the temperature is not being maintained correct then it will affect your combustion process it will not only cause a combustion failure even if sometimes the combustion is sustained the exhaust condition of the boiler would not be good enough and it can lead to emitting of black or dark colored smoke which is not allowed either at sea or as well as under port conditions definitely. So we have to make sure that heater is always in fantastic working condition and so is the burner. Now having understood the combustion system as well as the different elements, their roles and the operation system of the combustion diagram, let us now have a look at the flow process that is followed to make sure combustion is achieved in a proper manner and with the best possible efficiency. So first of all when we are triggering the power button and the boiler is in the auto or it can be through manual trigger also in the manual mode, what happens is the first process that takes place is the draft fan is being turned on for the supply of the pre-purge air. This pre-purge air is responsible for making sure that the furnace where the combustion is taking place is always in the ambient draft condition as well as any pre-combustion vapor or any pre-combustion byproducts in the form of gaseous byproducts which are there are being expelled out and the condition is always under the ambient draft condition. And for that to happen, it is shown here open air damper to max and wait time 1. That is the time interval for which this entire process of pre purge would be carried out is the T1. Once that is achieved, simultaneously also we are checking different elements such as the duct pressure as well as the water level and the fuel pressure in the fuel oil supply line. This water level is the boiler water level that we are checking through the level gauging system that is the remote and the local gauging system as well as the fuel pressure that is being maintained in the main fuel line as well as the pilot line. If everything is alright then the process would go ahead and if it is not then there would be a negative signal and that means it would be triggered into the shutdown. And after that we have to restart after resetting the shutdown once we have been able to find out the flaw because of which the shutdown happened and that is in the form of the alarm that we can see on the panel and then again restart the cyclic process. So now let us assume that if everything is achieved efficiently until here the process moves forward. After that the pre purge sequence is eliminated and the damper of the draft air fan is shifted to a minimum opening. What this does is that it regulates the damper into the perfect condition to achieve the combustion within the boiler because too high or too low draft would either force the flame to go off or would not allow the flame to sustain in the first place. That is something which we are not looking at happening. So the damper has to be regulated. Post that the igniter burner is turned on. When the igniter burner is triggered what happens is it is triggered for a time of T2 that is the T2 here indicates the time period for which the igniter is on and simultaneously pilot valve is also triggered and this is the pilot valve we are talking about the main fuel line. So it has to be made sure that the time for which the pilot valve is triggered should be a little less than for the igniter. Why so? Because if the igniter goes off before the solenoid is closed for this particular line let's say or for the time interval for which the fuel is supplied it would make a condition where the flame would not sustain and that is why it is written over here that the time relation is such that the T3 is closed before T2 and also T2 is less than T1 to make sure that the correct sequence is achieved. All this is being consider that first of all the igniter is on and after that the pilot valve is on to make sure that the proper combustion condition is achieved. Post that once the ignition flame is there after that if the conditions are ambient what will happen is a little bit period of time is allowed before the main fuel valve is triggered open with the help of the next solenoid. So what will happen is wait time we are indicating here is T4. This T4 is the in between time that I am allowing for the ignition of the main burner through the supply of the main fuel oil. After that main fuel oil solenoid is triggered and it allows the main fuel oil to flow into the line. 
and again the control air and the fuel oil modulation through the controller and after that a perfect combustion output is achieved. In case if after the first check flame condition from the pilot valve and the pilot burner triggering is not obtained, what happens is it sends a no signal that is the failure signal and then simultaneously the valve which is already open for the pilot line for the fuel to flow in as well as the main line which is going to get opened all the solenoids get closed and a failure alarm is again given and the boiler would again go into the trip or shutdown condition after that again we have to reset the boiler. This is the complete loop that allows us to understand how the boiler is actually fired under auto or manual condition depending upon a number of pre-checks that happen within the PID and the controller system itself to make sure that all the alarms are under a fulfilled condition that is there are no running alarms onto the boiler that can trigger an emergency shutdown situation as well as all the other parameters such as the draft air condition, fuel pressure and steam line triggering pressure and a lot of different aspects such as the water level are in the actual state where the combustion is required. The same process you would find being modulated for the high firing and the low firing modes under different conditions. I hope that the video clears all your doubts that are existing with the regards of boiler firing as well as the flow process that we depend upon for the firing and if any doubt still exists or if you want us to dwell on any particular element within the flow process, do make sure to drop into the comment section and let us know and we will be happy to oblige. Also, I request you to kindly subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and like our videos and also share them with your colleagues as we invite you to subscribe to our channel and help us grow further and keep us motivated in providing such engaging content. Thank you so much.